Greetings, everyone, and welcome to worship at Central United Church, the church with heart in the heart of Brandon City. I'd like to begin um, by acknowledging the land. For thousands of years, indigenous people have lived on this land. As we gather for worship this morning, we acknowledge the first people of this land and the promises of Treaty 2 to live with respect on this land and to live in peace and harmony with its people. As I acknowledge the land, we're mindful of those 715 unmarked graves found at uh, the Cowessus First Nation, and we uh, are one with the people of Cowessus. Let us sing together, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Stir me from blasphemous wind, wind. 
Beautiful hymn. Come with your celebrations and joys. Come with your dreams for the Church of Jesus Christ. Prepare to enter into God's dream for us. We come to offer up the gifts of our lives and to receive the power of the Spirit in our lives. This is the light that gives us clarity. This is the light of Jesus the Christ who guides our way. Jesus' light shines on us and within us. And because of the light, we have gladness in our hearts, peace in our souls, and love that never lets us go. Let us pray together. Oh God, you call us and wait for us to come home. We bring the real stuff of our lives to offer in worship. We long to be touched and filled with your spirit, for we come in hunger and waiting. Surprise us and fill us as we worship. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us sing about the spirit again, spirit dancing on the waters. Spirit dancing on the water, sun reflecting, sun that grace, flow of life to all the creatures, giving life to human race. Spirit dancing on the waters, naming home and they should part, giving free. How manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, creeping things, innumerable are there, living things both small and great. And there go the ships and Leviathan that you form to sport in it. And these all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them they gather it up, and when you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. 
I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to God, for I rejoice in my creator. Spirit received. All the uh, seasonal changes of creation bring me joy. It's amazing to witness how creator God creates and then recreates. The seasons show us the order and the rhythm of the created order. When the season changes to spring and summer, we witness resurrection at work. The bulbs that lay dormant underground through winter burst forth in spring with radiance and beauty. And this brings us much joy. Our spirits rejoice when we see the iris bloom burst forth. We are uplifted with the greening of the grass and leaves bursting forth from the bud. Creation seems to groan in the midst of below normal temperature in winter when the ground is so hard. And then all is renewed with the resurgence of warm winds in spring and the heightened anticipation of the growth and beauty and bounty of harvest that lay ahead. Creation really is poetry and music from the spirit and we receive it with joy. It is wisdom from the source of creation, a loving God. The psalm is glorification of God with God's glory revealed in the natural order. The psalm reads like a creation narrative from Genesis. Heavens spread out like a tent, waters distributed in their places, day and night, the sun and moon directing our way. In joyful spirit, God has brought forth a world of intricacy and order with everything created, receiving help from the other. Each is dependent on something else, food in due season from plants or animals, the renewal of the ground for production, the human compassion that supports one another. This psalm is all about joy a world created from a spirit of joy for the joy and happiness of the inhabitants of the earth, you and I. There is joy in everything from the foundation of the earth to the joy in rain, dew, snow, the joy of a dog playing frisbee, the singing of the birds, human unconditional love. The greatest joy is people helping people. The joy in winning over the evils of the world that is constantly disrupting the harmony of the earth, overcoming the groaning of creation caused by disruptors that bring oppression, that bring pain, unnecessary suffering to any inhabitant of the earth is a priority on the created order. order. Overcoming these groans. This brings us the greatest joy. This is the spirit working in the world through us. And for this together with the psalmist, we sing for joy. May we sing to God every moment of the day. May we sing praises to the creator with every breath. And may our happiness be pleasing to creator God through the good times and also the bad times. Amen. Let us pray this prayer of reconciliation. Gracious God, even before we knew you, you invited us in and made us welcome. And before we had opened our hearts and learned to love, you had opened your heart to us. We confess eyes often closed to encountering you in our brothers and sisters, in your people so different from us. We pray, open our eyes. We confess hearts often closed to compassion. We pray, open our hearts. We confess our spirits often closed to your spirit, for you invite us into an adventure of faith. You would knock down our walls and teach us new languages of prayer and faith. We pray that you will open our spirits to your spirit, surround us in your persistent, welcoming grace. 
Amen. And the words of assurance, enter into the good news of Jesus Christ and let the Holy Spirit fill us afresh that we may let go of the darkness and walk forever in peace. Spirit of the living God, let us sing it together. I read now from uh, Romans where it says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to God's will. The meditation is, is called groaning creation. The people uh, of the world have been groaning through the pandemic. Healthcare workers are groaning as they see patients gasping for air under ventilators. Family members who can't see their loved ones in hospital because of restrictions groan with frustration. Businesses struggle to survive as profit margins drop groaning with anxiety, wondering what their next move will be. Folks who can't partake in activities that they enjoy, like attending concerts and sporting events, groan and sigh, wondering when will this, when will this end? The transition from a normal lifestyle to a restricted one for the benefit of the common good has been difficult for all, but folks have pulled together in an effort to get through this. There are the groans from the effects of this virus that have plagued the world for a year and a half or more. And within the pandemic, there are the usual groans from living with the challenges that life is always throwing at us, pandemic or no pandemic. The usual predictions, the usual predicaments of the life journey how will I go on without the one I love most in life? How will I feed my family? Will I make it through my cancer treatments? Will I ever have this surgery? Can we maintain life on our planet with the climate changing dramatically as it is? How do we repair relationships between people that are conflicted with opposite viewpoints? 
Will history continue to repeat itself with, with the hate and oppression of one group by another based on race or religion? These are all groaners, groans coming through governments, through heartache, through anxiety, through fear. Groans that are heard by the creator, God actually joins in the groaning. Creation has been groaning, it seems, from the beginning. In the beginning, when creation began, God was pleased. Creation brought God joy. God created humanity to enjoy and care for creation. Within history, in every era, there have been folks working for God to recreate, to make things new and revitalized within environments that have been harsh and oppressive. And the Holy Spirit has been working through individuals, through groups, through government, through human rights advocates, for love to prevail, for love to win out over misunderstanding and judgment. The whole creation has been groaning, like it says in the scripture, in labor pains. There is pain involved in bringing a new life into the world. There is crying out with pain. There is struggle, which sometimes lasts for a long time. And then there is new birth. There is joy. There are tears. There, there is gratitude. We groan when we observe the mistreatment of people and the lack of care for the natural resources of our world. We all groan together because we are all in this together. We care for one another. When one is in pain, we, we all are in pain. When one is oppressed, we are all oppressed. We feel the fear of a family in a refugee camp. We feel the mistreatment of people in all countries, especially our own. We feel the pain of parents when their young child dies. You, Christian, received the first fruits of the Spirit when you were baptized. That was your initiation into the recreation of our world, the working toward fairness, compassion, and love for all. That was the beginning. Remember your baptism when you received the first fruits of the Spirit, and that puts you on the path of following Jesus, following Jesus' walk in the world, walking the way Jesus walked with the mindset of Jesus. Now, at this point in the Christian journey, you work alone and with others to bring to birth a new kind of earth. We work for some of the groaning to stop. We work for a renewed creation in all aspects. We groan inwardly until the time when all people are reconciled one to the other, when all people restore a damaged climate, when generosity prevails over greed. For we have hope. We work hard and wait patiently for what we cannot see. We, for hope is something we strive for and we are confident in what we hope for becoming reality. We hope for deliverance for the Rohingya or Uyghurs or the First Nations people everywhere. We hope and we work, for hope and work are one. Sometimes we all experience weakness when our spirits are poor and we feel vulnerable. The Holy Spirit helps us in that weakness. Sometimes we're so weak we can't articulate what it is we want to say. We can only feel. We just feel. At times like this, the Spirit prays for us. We feel, and our feelings are God working within us. With sighs too deep for words from us, the Spirit intercedes, doing the praying to God for us, our advocate, our voice. At Pentecost, that same Spirit came to a weakened group of Christians wondering what the next step was after Jesus died. 
leaderless, rudderless, vulnerable, wondering about the future direction of this movement they called the way. Jesus had told them to be patient and wait for that spirit to come to you as a group and you will know the path to follow. She will be your guide. Creation groans in 2021 in so many ways. There are more people than in Jesus' time. There's more diversity. There's more mouths to feed. There's more jobs to create. People are coming to terms with how we treated one another in the past, and there is a need for repentance and forgiveness. We are all one on this earth. We are all one people. We are all one people working on God's plan for redemption of the world, that is, saving the earth from sin, from error, or from evil. One for all and all for one is our motto. Paul said to the church at Rome, the suffering of the present time is not worth comparing to the glory to be revealed in the future. The Apostle Paul said those words. The hope, every effort, every move we make is for a restored earth, a restored people. If indigenous people groan, we groan with them, with hope for right relations. If children groan, we groan with them in hope of getting through bullying together. For when folks suffer for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit draws us into that suffering. Our world is messy at this time. There's plenty of pain like in childbirth. There's abundance of struggle. We hope and work through the struggle for the gift of new life, recreation, overcoming a health crisis, retrieving social justice, eliminating racism, ourselves being transformed to think brand new, throwing the outdated thoughts away, working for something better. New life for all because of love. All because of love. Everybody's missing human touch at this time. In illness or isolation, we long for human touch. And this is the beauty of our, our embodied existence, especially in our frailty. We are never alone. No one has ever been alone. God's spirit has always been there groaning, expressing our pain our fears, and our dreams, things too deep for us to put into words, sighing with us, groaning with us. Amen. Turn it over to Ken and Heather. And you join your heart 
Thank you. That was beautiful. Let us have a now, a now a prayer. First of all, let us have a moment of silence to think of people who at this moment are grieving because someone close to them or even far away from them has died and they, they are grieving severely. So let us pause and think about about that person at this time. Gracious and holy God, greater than our most exalted conception and yet nearer and more intimate than our very breath, we thank you for this day and for the happy news of, of living. Help us to know you for ourselves. And in those times when you seem most elusive, help us to trust the testimony of those whose knowledge of you far exceeds our own. Keep us growing even in times of doubt. Grant us the courage to follow the risen Christ wherever he might lead us, whenever he might call to us. Come now, O Spirit, and create a moment of glory where we can sense you among us, and the world can witness in us the good news that life in you brings. We come to you now with the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I just want to thank everybody for continuing to support the work of uh, Central United Church in all aspects, financially, with their time, their talent, and their prayers. And. Uh, we now will sing a song to pray on those givings. It's called 
though I may speak, 372 in Voices United. Come, Holy Spirit, set our hearts on fire. Find the passion you have placed in our lives and let it become the fire of transformation that refreshes, that refills, that renews, not just for us, O God, but so we may join with others to live your love, a love that transforms the world. As Christ's Pentecost people, we offer these gifts with generous spirits for the loving transformation of this our world. Amen. Let us sing the hymn now, She Flies On. And she carried him away in her embrace. 
go and let the Spirit blow through your life. Go and may the fire of faith be in you. Go in the love of God as followers of Jesus Christ. And go and make a difference. Thank you. 